Hi guys, first of all, welcome to this course, Design Innovation Methods. My name is Jim Steenbuckers. I will be one of your teachers in the teaching team for this course. And I would like to present to you the case book packed with different interesting business cases today. So let's go ahead and see what we have in store. Um, let's talk a little bit about the case buildup. Uh, the case buildup is as follows. First, I will give you a very, very brief overview of what the organization is about. I will talk to you about their business model, how they make money, or what type of business model shift they have made through. I will talk to you about the problem they solve. So what problem did they initially solve when they entered the market? Talk to you a little bit about the USPs of the organization, about their business strategy, about their future plans, and I will also reveal some of the sources that we have used for this research. So please bear with me as we move through one of our first cases, which is Duolingo. Um, as you might know, Duolingo is a free language education uh, application for the entire world. So basically, because it's free, it also has lots of users. You can learn lots of languages. Um, it's a very simply um, downloadable app that you can download on your smartphone. You just go there and you have different levels. Uh, you can select your entry level and you can try and see and learn uh, more different languages in your spare time. So why um, Duolingo? Duolingo made a shift from physical to digital. So what I find very interesting in their model is they made languages so easily accessible online in a digital tool like nobody's ever done it before, as similar or even better results than people would have in a regular classroom. So this is why they made a very successful shift from the physical to the digital world. How does Duolingo make money? Well, you can see over here that Duolingo, um, of course, develops courses. But how do they do that? How did they get the money to develop these courses? They rely fully on users that learn languages. The users pay with their time through advertisements, but there's also consumers that pay for additional value. So they might pay for a non-advertising space. And then Duolingo develops even more courses and attracts more users. And this is a circle, the money wheel that Duolingo has exploited over the years. So basically what Duolingo said when they entered the market is that uh, the current business model for learning languages is about students paying on average $500. But the problem is that over 95% of the world's population doesn't even have these $500 to pay. And this is uh, one of the interesting cases I took from the book, Business Model Shift. So this is one of the uh, major inspirations for this case uh, when it comes to Duolingo. Um, so basically, if you want to learn more about that, you can also uh, think about uh, the book because there's also packed with a lot of different other cases. The USPs for Duolingo are basically that Duolingo is free. Um, it's free because of the ads that are in there. It's also very fun. It's gamified. You can download the app on your phone. When you're choosing this case, I would definitely do that. So download the app on your phone, start playing around with it because you will notice that they learn new languages in such a fun and playful way which also makes it effective. Another part of the effectiveness is that they harness the power of machine learning. So this is what Duolingo does very well. They harness the power of machine learning. They are very personalized in their approach. They know exactly how you learn, what types of things you might forget, or what types of questions you might do wrong over the course of using the app. So then they know how they can perfectionalize their tutoring and their mentoring to you. So that's what they do, and that's why it's such an effective system. Duolingo has over 300 million users worldwide, and basically that's also the power, uh, because if they don't have any users, there's no uh, use to this model because they need such a large user base in their strategy, um, which is based on digital first, uh, they want to expand to education. So one of their uh, main goals for the coming years is to expand into education, expand into the field of language learning and try and see how they can aid classes and aid schools even more than they used to. But what people get very sad about when they use Duolingo is that it's packed with ads, it's online only, 
So what Duolingo thought about very cleverly is coming up with a freemium model. So a free model for basic users, but a paid model for the users that want additional or more service. What does this look like? Well, for consumers, they have uh, Duolingo Plus. So Duolingo Plus is basically their value proposition for the consumers that are tired of ads, that also want to use Duolingo in an offline setting, for instance, when they're on a plane without Wi-Fi or when they're somewhere, when they're traveling somewhere where they don't have Wi-Fi for a moment, they can use Duolingo Plus. Um, but also they have a proposition for professionals or for business. So they have a test center where you can be certified with a language uh, at a certain level, uh, which might be interesting for businesses to admit new employees or for schools to admit new students. So that's their solution for professionals and businesses. Then they also have a solution for education. So right now, um, probably even more at this moment, but there's over 200,000 classrooms using Duolingo for schools. What does it look like? It looks like, like this somewhere where you have a dashboard as a teacher and you can really see what type of students you have in your class, uh, what the students are doing at the moment, what their progress is. So it's also a powerful tool to empower these language teachers to keep up with the progress of their students, see where there might be any any missing gaps, see what their, where there might be missing links so that they can provide a better service to their students, which is also very valuable to them from a Duolingo perspective. In the future, uh, so in the future, uh, as I said, Duolingo wants to focus and expand to other educational fields. So they want to see how can we think about expanding what we do in terms of language education, but maybe also expanding in terms of other types of education. Um, also, they want to think about and consider hyper-personalized learning. So this really hooks into the machine learning and effectiveness component of this case where they talk about how can you basically create an environment which is so personalized that the learning becomes this easy for the students. Also, they want to stay true to their mission because of all sorts of, um, all sorts of facts, all sorts of factors um, influencing them in their business case. Of course, it will be a challenge for them to stay free forever, but this, this is definitely what they will do. They will definitely try and stick and stay true to their mission of moving to digital and making sure that language education becomes accessible everywhere in the world and not only in the more privileged parts of the world. So this is basically some of their future plans. As their CEO also um, was underlining, in the longer term, we want everybody to get the access to all types of education of the highest quality. We have started with languages but we will not stop there. So that's what their CEO said. So perhaps we will see other types of solutions based on a very similar platform, like a history or geography lessons, or maybe even math lessons, which might be very tricky, but I'm sure they will be able to do it. Um, here are some of the sources that you can go to. Basically in this course, we give you a very, um, very small part of the business case. We give you a very small parts where we explain about this case because what we want you to do is we really want you to start looking for types of information like this yourself but definitely here are some of the sources that you can start with some of the articles that i read to be able to come up with this type of information for you but definitely the internet is packed with information about duolingo and also try it out yourself